and so today we are going to be speaking about the Craigslist killer. This occurred in Ohio in 2011. The man was called Richard Beasley. His father left when he was 18 years old and his stepfather was an alcoholic. Beasley claims that his stepfather used to beat him and that he was sexually abused by neighbourhood kids. Now, Beasley had a high IQ but was diagnosed with ADHD and so this stopped him from concentrating a lot of the time. When he was older, he joined the US Navy and he became addicted to drugs and alcohol. So because of his addictions, he had to leave the US Navy. And then when he left, he went to jail for 15 years for drug trafficking and burglary. He was released from prison in 2004 and he became a preacher. When he was a preacher, he met a young man called Brogan Rafferty. He was 16 years old and he was struggling with his parents' divorce. Beasley became his mentor and in 2011, Beasley posted an ad on Craigslist. And the ad reads, Wanted, caretaker for farm. Simply watch over a 688 acre patch of hilly farmland and feed a few cows. You get $300 a week and a nice two bedroom trailer. Someone older and single preferred, but will consider all. Relocation is a must and you must have a clean criminal record and be trustworthy. This is a permanent position. The farm is used mainly as a hunting preserve, is overrun with game, has stocked three acre pond, but some beef cattle will be kept. Nearest neighbour is one mile away. The place is secluded and beautiful. It will be a real getaway for the right person. This is the job of a lifetime. If you are ready to relocate, please contact me ASAP. This position will not stay open. So this was the ad that he posted on Craigslist. Now more than 100 people applied for this uh, and Beasley made sure that people were aware that it was sought after job. In his emails back, he made sure that people knew that over 100 people had applied. He was looking for specific candidates. So he was looking for a middle aged, never married or divorced person, no family. And he needed them to start quickly. And he made this clear and said that they need to be able to easily walk away from their life wherever they are. If women applied, he wouldn't reply to them. Uh, and if males applied, further questions were asked such as age, are you married? Have you got a criminal record? If they passed these questions, then Beasley would interview the candidates at either the Waffle House or the mall. He gave candidates a pre-employment questionnaire at interview and said this was because he was an equal opportunity employer. He also asked about qualifications as to whether they had any experience with carpentry or livestock. If the interview went well, Beasley said that they were in the final category. If the interview was not going well, then he would end it abruptly. One man who went for interview, he was getting married. Beasley snatched the pre-employment questionnaire from his hand and shook his hand and thanked him for his time. Now, Ralph Geiger was 56 and he was staying at a shelter. He ran a maintenance business and Beasley met him on an off chance. It was not through Craigslist. And he saw that Geiger was down on his luck and told him about the job. Geiger was excited and got in Rafferty's car with Beasley and they took him deer hunting. So they took him to where they hunted deer and they shot him with a pistol. Rafferty in later confession said that the motive for Beasley's kills was money. So David Pawley was the first candidate picked from the Craigslist ad. He was 51, divorced, living with his older brother in Norfolk, Virginia. He worked as a manager in a warehouse and drove the trucks for the warehouse as well. He married his high school sweetheart and adopted her son, Wade. Pawley quit his job in 2003 and he never really found anything steady after that. He disagreed with Wade a lot, who was his adopted son, and so he and his wife divorced in 2009. He was looking for jobs when he came across the ad, and when he got the job, he was so excited. He called his best friend, who lived in Ohio, his best friend was called Maul, and they talked every day for at least five hours and they'd always been best friends. Moore was divorced as well and had moved out to Ohio and turned his life around. And so 
Pauline wanted to do the same, basically. He had a twin sister who was called Debs. He called her and told her as well. And she wanted him to spend the holidays with her. And he agreed because she said that she didn't want him out there all alone on his own because it sounded a bit lonely. So he agreed to spend the holidays with her. And they never heard from him again. Scott Davis, he was 48. He lived in South Carolina and he was the next person to answer the Craigslist ad. He had a girlfriend, but he left her in South Carolina for the job. He gave his accounts away for his landscaping business and Beasley reminded him to bring his Harley Davidson because there was beautiful rural roads and they would be perfect to ride his motorcycle across. Davis told people that he was going to care for his mum. She lived outside of Akron and her house was falling apart. So he told her that he was going to fix it up after he'd finished on his job. So she knew that he was moving to Ohio to look after this farm. And four weeks later, he was picked up by in Rafferty's car and they were taking him to the farm. So with him, he'd brought his truck, which had his clothes, tools, stereo and a Harley Davidson, all in a trailer attached to the truck. On the way to the farm, Beasley told Rafferty to pull over on a wooded hilly stretch. He said that they'd been deer hunting in the morning and he had left his equipment down by the creek. So Davis, being the good person that he is, decided, yeah, I'll help out and said that he would help him bring his equipment back up to the car. So he followed Beasley down the hill and after some wandering, Beasley said that he was lost, he couldn't see his equipment anywhere and that they should turn back and head up to the road. So Davis agreed. Davis turned around to head up back to the road and heard a click. He turned around to see what it was and saw a gun pointed at his head. The gun had got jammed, which was the click that he heard. And then Davis said that he realised that he was the next deer. So he knocked the gun and used his arms to shield his face. The shots didn't stop as he ran away and um, one of the shots hit him in the right elbow, which shattered his entire elbow. So after some running and hearing the shots, he saw a road and he crossed it. He didn't want to stay in the open because he was afraid that he'd get caught. So he hid in the woods across the road and stayed there for seven hours. When night fell, he got back to the road and began walking. He said that he was fearing for his life, not because only Beasley was shooting at him and he was worried that he'd stayed there, but he was actually worried that he would die of blood loss at this point. His sleeve and pant leg were covered in blood uh, and eventually after some walking, he came across a house. So he rang the doorbell of Jeff Shockling. He asked Jeff to ring 911 and the sheriff arrived 15 minutes later. So Davis told them of the Craigslist ad, but the sheriff was confused because they said that a farm of 680 acres was unusual because there weren't any around there, meaning that Beasley had made the whole farm up. There wasn't one. Um, so the sheriff didn't believe Davis at first because he thought he was part of a drug deal gone wrong. So he started to investigate, but not very thoroughly. In the following five days, police tried to find leads, but again, it wasn't very urgent to them. Meanwhile, another response to the Craigslist ad came in. This was from a man named Timothy Kern. He described himself as single. He was divorced in 1997. He had two sons, Zach, who was 19, and Nick, who was 17. He didn't mention his sons in his email, otherwise Beasley probably would have never replied. He messaged them multiple times every day and in the 90s he worked as a sound engineer at a local club. He lost his job in 2000 and struggled to find another one. So Beasley met Kern in a car park and picked him up in Rafferty's car. All he had was his car with him, everything else he'd left with his sons. His car barely ran, so he said, just leave it there, there's no point in me bringing it, which was fair enough. They drove Kern to Dead Mall. It was called Dead Mall because all of the shops and businesses had shut down and there were still signs saying 50% off or everything must go. So it was known locally as Dead Mall. 
So Beasley told Kern that they had been hunting for squirrels in the morning and as they'd been hunting for squirrels, he'd lost his watch. So he asked Kern if he would help him look for his watch. So Kern, Beasley and Rafferty all went into the woods to look for this watch. Um, Rafferty recalled five shots until Kern was dead. So upon police investigation, they'd heard Davis's story, again, not urgently looking for evidence because they thought it was a drug deal gone wrong. Um, and then Paulie's twin, Debs, she called the sheriff's department and said that her and Maul, his best friend, hadn't heard from him in a few days, which was unusual because he called Maul at least five hours every day and he'd heard nothing as well. So she then explained the Craigslist ad and said that he'd gone for a job. So then the officers thought this was suspicious as it linked up with Davis's story. So the next day, officers called FBI cybercrime specialist um, to get information on who had written the ad. They sent cadaver dogs to where Davis was shot and they found some disturbed soil and began digging. So as they began digging, they saw a unique bracelet and a foot with a sock on it. So they realised this was a body and they described the body and the bracelet to Debs, who was Paulie's twin, and she confirmed that that was Paulie's bracelet and body. So the police now knew that they were looking for a killer. Nearby, they also found a second empty grave, which was obviously meant for Davis, but because he'd escaped, it hadn't been filled. Officers identified Beasley from CCTV at the Waffle House, where he'd interviewed Davis and the other, other victims. They tracked down Rafferty at his school. They interviewed him in the principal's office. And while being interviewed, other officers went and searched his house. That evening, police arrived with a warrant for Rafferty's arrest and he was placed under arrest. They also arrested Beasley. Rafferty was not eligible for the death penalty, so he was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. And in 2013, two years later, uh, Beasley's trial finally started. Uh, he was sentenced to the death penalty for first degree murder and he has maintained his innocence the whole time. He was walking out of the courtroom and said to the families, I didn't do it. A motorcycle gang roams around these parts and I'll pray for you, which is just so insensitive in my opinion. Um, and they are both appealing their convictions. So that's all for today, guys. Let me know what you think. Have you ever had a weird experience on like a Tinder date or some online a meeting let me know down in the comments i will leave all of the sources down in the description and that's all for today and thanks for watching